I was contacted by a viewer and he told me a crazy story of what seemed to be a Bernie Madoff like Ponzi scheme, an investment fraud that left hundreds of people penniless. However, as I began to do more digging, more research over these last few months, my investigation proved this was a story of financial suffering. Um, my grandparents, they've lost everything. Um, they lost their entire life savings. I'm 77, lost my entire life savings. A group of distraught people from all over the country, from Newport Beach to New Mexico, gather in San Bernardino at the district attorney's office. They say they want justice and desperately need the DA to do something. These people all have something in common. They've been swindled, defrauded out of their entire life savings. They are just a few of the nearly 500 victims who all told were built out of $160 million in a decades old investment fraud scheme based in San Bernardino. They say the man you see here, San Bernardino resident and businessman Larry Polhill, stole their money in a phony business enterprise that managed to cheat people for the last 30 years. Mr. Polhill approached us with investments that from the outside seemed really attractive. Um, they paid good interest, but more importantly, it seemed to be risk free because he assured us that the investments were collateralized with assets, buildings above and beyond each investment. And the so problem is there was no collateral. Polhill was committing fraud by promising his hundreds of investors lots of money. However, there were no assets, there were no buildings, there was nothing to insure the investors' cash. Stephanie McPherson's grandparents lived in Big Bear Lake in San Bernardino County for 15 years. Her grandparents, now in their late 80s and in failing health, began investing with Pole Hill in 2006. Two years later, they lost all their money. My grandfather, whom I love very much, is a wonderful man, um, an honorable veteran, um, worked his entire life dedicated to children with learning disabilities, um, just gone. My, my grandmother at the time just completed chemo, just had surgery. It's heartbreaking. I mean, they're fighting for money that was theirs. They trusted and they invested and they lost it all. They saw nothing from it. And um, it's devastating. It's absolutely devastating. We are now subject to just living on Social Security and uh, here's a gentleman who s sold or told people that all his the notes were uh, secured by assets. There were no assets. He fraudulently misled people. He was using our money to pay other investors. So I'm here for people like the Kurtzes, people like Mr. Rule. You know, I'm. I'm fortunate. I'm. I'm. A, I got a good job. You know. I have a, I'm an airline pilot. I can. I can provide for myself. Well, I'm here for the other investors who, who lost their life savings and they can't provide for their family. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission did begin investigating Larry Polhill back in 2011 after the victims accused Polhill. When the SEC finally had enough evidence, they filed charges against him and his private equity real estate company known as American Pacific Financial Corporation, or APFC. In September of 2013, the SEC concluded, quote, Pole Hill defrauded nearly 500 investors who purchased promissory notes under the false premise that they were secured by specific properties or other collateral. The SEC's report went on to say, quote, Pole Hill used his company to buy and sell real estate and distressed assets, and he offered investors the opportunity to invest in the company through unregistered notes that would yield them interest payments of 5 to 17 percent per year. The SEC also said, quote, the collateral that Pole Hill claimed made the investment secure was often non-existent or otherwise impaired. The properties were sometimes even sold without notice to investors. When APFC eventually filed for bankruptcy, it named the investors as unsecured creditors who were owed nearly $160 million. None of Pole Hill's investment offerings were registered with the SEC, end quote. While these victims praised the SEC for aggressively going after Pole Hill, they say they were livid 
that this white-collar criminal used the bankruptcy laws to weasel out of repaying them because they say they were still left out in the cold with an empty bank account. For years, many of the victims repeatedly tried contacting various law enforcement agencies like the San Bernardino District Attorney's Office and the California Attorney General's Office begging for help. Nothing happened. The victims say they were in financial ruin. We may not get our money back, but why doesn't the system have justice and fairness for the people? Why isn't somebody prosecuted? Well, after all the years of pleading for help from anyone and everyone, from local government to state, there just might be some justice on the way for the victims. The San Bernardino District Attorney's Office took notice. After PBS SoCal's investigation, we forwarded numerous documents, including emails and victim information about this case. Just recently, the DA's office released this statement to us, which reads in part, quote, when this matter was initially brought to the attention of our office in 2010, there was insufficient evidence to file state criminal charges. However, subsequently, the SEC conducted an investigation. The DA's office goes on to say, in December 2014, a final federal district court judgment was entered against defendant Polhill. He was ordered to pay victim restitution for his illegal conduct in the amount of $21 million and a civil penalty of $5 million. The DA concludes, quote, in light of the SEC action and additional information from victims brought to our attention by PBS, the district attorney's office has reopened its investigation and will review the entire matter to determine if we can now file state criminal fraud charges, end quote. And many of the victims have thanked us for investigation and the fact that I was able to spend months researching their case. And they say, finally, they have some peace knowing the DA's office is now doing its own investigation. I should, of course, mention I obviously searched for Larry Polhill to try and be fair and interview him. We spent a day in San Bernardino first locating his old office on Hospitality Way. Well, he's not there anymore. Then we searched for him in the city of Grand Terrace in San Bernardino County. After getting word, he had an old office there. Yeah, we found the office, no Pole Hill. I guess, Rick and Elizabeth, we are gonna have to leave it to the authorities with the DA's office to find this white collar con man and possibly, finally, bring him to justice.